okay so welcome back to another video so here today we have a definite integral of um, repeated exponentiation so from x to the power x that's just the way it's grouped and then x um, to the raised to the power x to the power x and then raised to the power x to the power x and then this um, exponentiate exponentiation is infinite and continue on so forth dx so it's actually has a special name it's actually knows, known as uh, tetration but um, tetrations are generally the word is used for when you have um, we're dealing with partial order exponentiation here what we have here it's actually just um, it's infinite so in other words we can actually call this a tetration with infinite um, height uh, it's also a nickname is also known as the power tower but it's also dealing with partial order so I guess you can also call this you know the infinite power tower so that's basically um, today's video is calculating or uh, evaluating this integral of nested in, um, differentiation so uh, you might be thinking on how we might do this, maybe doing some sort of like substitution, but um, I wouldn't say but, but yes, that is correct. We would want to perform a substitution, but we want to instead not really call a variable, but call it a function. And do that substitution work a way around it? Uh, the special function we'll be using, this is actually known as the Lambert W function, and I've covered this um, video before, specifically um, evaluating its derivative and its integral of that function so i'll leave that link in the description below if you want to check so we'll be using that this is actually dealing with like inverse functions and um use utilizing that to actually work that integral a little bit more easier because eventually this will become into a sum which you know i've done videos just like that where we turn integrals into sums or rather it's a combination of like both a sum and an integral together as one but we just work for way, our way from there and then eventually we can just compute our sums. There will be some special values um, be included in the video as well, so just be on the lookout for that. So um, let's actually just jump in. So suppose if I want to call this function, um, well, what we want to do to substitution specifically. So I'll let f of x, we'll let this equal to x to the power x and then to the power x to the power x and then this is just nested so repeats on so on and so forth or in other words this is actually known as like it's a continuation of exponentiation so really in other words i can actually put this as f of x is equal to x to the power x to the power f of x now let's actually take the natural log of both sides so we'll have the natural log of f of x then we set this equal to um that means this is f of x times the natural log of x to the power x then i can actually rewrite this f of x using the e base and the natural log so in other words this is another way of writing it as e to the natural log of f of x and then multiply with the natural log of x to the power x okay and now what i can do now is i'll divide e to the ln of f of x to both sides over here so if that's the case then that means this will become the exponentiation will be a negative times that so this is e to the power negative ln of f of x um, then multiply with ln of f of x this is simply just equal to ln of x to the power x okay so now let's actually multiply negative one to both sides so here we would have negative e then negative ln of f of x ln of f of x then equal to the negative ln of um, x to the power x then now what we're going to do now is i'm actually going to take the lambert w function of both sides so denote this as capital w of uh, negative e then um, negative ln of f of x then ln of f of x set this equal to the w negative ln of, f of x to the power x so the formula how um the lambert w function is defined really is um it's actually written as x is equal to w of x multiply with e to the uh, w of x so we'll just utilize that if we just take the lambert function of both sides so we can see that yeah, this will just be the negative um, ln of f of x and then we still have that equal to the w of negative ln of x to the power x then what we can do from here is um, well now I can actually just divide um, negative 1 to both sides so then this is natural log of f of x then this is multiplied with negative w of the negative ln of x to the power x from there 
uh, we notice that I can actually just um, take the exponential of both sides, so E, then that means we have um, just F of X on its own on this side. So then um, let me move on. Let me have put this in a new color so we know where to go from here. So now over here we would have, um, so it exponentiate both sides. So then this will become f of x, then this is equal to e to the um, negative w of um, negative ln of x to the power x. We can actually utilize this um, formula right here and write this as, um, so I can actually divide an x and divide an e to the wx to both sides. So we have a new formula, I can just put this as, uh, with this relation w of x is uh, divided by x is equal to e to the negative w of x. So we'll use this formula um, to fix this up a bit. Then we'll see that if I just replace the input for the um, negative ln of x to the x to put this back here, then we have um, w of negative ln of x to the power x. Then I'll just rewrite, rewrite this. Um, so I'll put the negative x out here, then multiply with ln of x. This is simply just equal to still e to the negative w, um, negative ln of x to the power x. So that still stays the same. We, sh we, so we should show that this is equal to f of x, where f of x is um, this. So let me actually put a little bracket just to denote um, what's happening. So now over here, we know that this is just f of x and we set that equal to x to the power x. I'll just put it like this, just to save room. Okay, so now we know that. So at least now we have a substitution we can um, put back in. So now, um, now we have our new integral. So let's switch to another color. I'll put this back in black now. So we have a new integral. So we have, now I'm gonna put this over here. Um, we have the new integral from zero to one of, um, so now this will be w of negative, ln of x to the power x, then we divide this with negative x, then ln of x, this is dx. And now the interesting thing is that I, um, the Lambert W function actually has a Taylor, uh, Taylor series expansion, and that's actually achieved by using the Lagrange inversion theorem, which is actually, um, it gives the Taylor series expansion of an inverse function of an analytic function. So um, that's how we get this. So now um, if I just replace this with the um, Taylor series expansion, so this is the inf um, infinite sum, n is equal to one of, so this will be negative n, and then to the power n subtract one. We'll put this with our input of x, so I'll just put this right, like right here. So we have negative x, then um, ln of x to the power n subtract one, and then we divide this by um, n factorial then this is dx. Now we notice that, um, so we're actually just gonna look at the sum for now. So I'll just rewrite this again, n is equal one. So now let's actually expand this out a bit. So we'll put the n minus one distribute with the negatives then the variables. We do the same thing over here. So we'll start off one by one. So negative one to the power n subtract one, then times n to the power n subtract one, multiply with negative one to the n subtract one. Now we're, we're moving on to this term, that's why. So then this will be x to the power n subtract one. Then we'll still keep this as ln of x to the power n subtract one. All this still divided by n factorial. Then we can actually simplify this out a little further. So the equal sign denotes the next uh, line from earlier. n is equal one, right? Then if I just combine the terms, so now we would have negative one to the power two n, multiply with n to the power n subtract one, then x n subtract one, then ln of x n minus one, simply because they serve the, um, we have both have negative one basis, so I just combined the exponents. That's um, pretty easy to see. Then n factorial. Now from here, what we can do is, um, so let me now put this arrow just to move on to the next. So now we have the infinite sum, n is equal to one. So now I guess I should put this as now, we're still dealing with, with our integral from zero to one. Then if we just substitute this back in, let's see, negative one, two n, then n to the power, n subtract one times x, n subtract one, um, then of course ln of x, n subtract one divided by n factorial. 
then we can see that, um, I should also put a DX and since this is integrals as well, then we can see that um, you can also check this by um, absolute convergence. We can actually just um, interchange the sum and the um, integral. So now the inter so now the sum comes outside and then all the um, pieces that do not, um, that are not dependent on X. So we have negative one, then two N, uh, then N to N subtract one divided by um, N factorial and then because, um, so we have an x to the power n minus one and then ln of x to the power n minus one. So the way I'll group this, um, I'll write this as x times ln of x to the power n subtract one then dx. So now we need to calculate what this integral is before we can continue further. Now the next part is actually gonna be doing with some substitutions. You know what, um, let me make room. So I'm gonna take this piece, um, move it over here, and then I'm gonna utilize the space so we can um, put in more work for what's coming. So give me one second. So I just move everything from here up to here, and then I just put the br um, bracelet, the brackets, excuse me, that this is the next thing we want to evaluate. So let's actually start from there. So now let's suppose that um, we do a substitution. We'll let x equals e to the power t, okay? Then just differentiate both sides. So dx is equal to e to the power t, then dt. So now we would have our new substitutions, or our new bounds, and our new integrand. So um, by putting in the new bound, so x is equal to one, so that means t will have to be uh, zero, then zero, then t will have to be negative infinity. Then we just do the substitution. So this will have um, e to the power t, then ln of e to the power t, just t. And then this is to the power um, n subtract one. Then put in your substitution, e to the t dt. Now we actually just combine all this a little better. So zero, negative infinity. Um, I'm gonna distribute the n minus one to all the exponents. So now we have e t times n subtract t, um, then t to the n minus one then times e to the t dt. And if you simplify this out, we have the new integral from zero to negative infinity. So we have e to the t to the power t times n and then times t to the n subtract one dt. Okay, so now next let's actually perform yet another substitution. So we'll let t equals um, negative p divided by n. And so dt will just equal negative one divided by n, then dp. Next is we'll just do the substitution. So, um, and we also calculate our new bounds. So we would have negative one divided by n, then from in um, zero to infinity. I'll, I'll just um, switch the bounds because we have infinity as the lower bound, zero as the upper bound. So this will become positive. Uh, one over n, this will be um, infinity and then zero. Then next is, um, so we just replace everything. So what is it? This will be um, e to the negative p, okay? Then next is we have that we just plug in uh, the t substitution. So negative p then divided by n, then n minus one dp, okay? Now, if we simplify all this out, so basically what's happening is that I have a negative p and then an n minus one. Um, that would mean that we have a negative one to the power n minus one, that can go outside, so that's good. And uh, we have an n to the power n minus one, that can also go outside too, but since there's an n over here, so n to the power one, so that'll cancel each other out, so we're just left with n to the power n. And so next is just, um, if I just put this as negative one, n minus one, then divide by n to the power n, okay? Then we have um, zero, infinity, then this is e to the negative p, then multiply with p to the power n minus one uh, dp, but what you'll notice is that the integral over here is actually a, a standard formula for the gamma function, so gamma of n. So now we have that, so now we can actually do the substitution over here. So let's see, now we have to go back to the black. So now, how about this? I'll put it this way. So now this is now equal to, um, need to evaluate equal to, so this is negative one to the power n minus one divided by n to the power n multiply with gamma of n. So we'll replace that. And to do a little bit of a, cl a clever trick, um, well, not really a trick, but it's just more of rewriting because by doing so, um, future steps will make things easier. I'm going to factor out a negative one out of that exponent. So I know it says one, 
uh, negative one to the power negative one is the same thing as one divided by negative one, which is still negative one, so um, that's fine. But at least that leaves us with negative one to the power n divided by n to the power n. So with that entire quantity, it's just negative one divided by n to the power n. So um, this will make things a little bit easier to write. And um, you'll see that now we would have the following is that we have negative, then the um, infinite sum at n is equal one. Uh, so now we would have negative one to the power two n, and then n to the n minus one divided by um, n factorial. Then we multiply by negative one divided by n to the negative, or well, not negative, to the power n, and then multiply by gamma. You can actually rewrite this a little further and say that we can actually use that this is negative infinity, n is equal to one, of, um, so now we just combine some things together. So now this will be negative one to the three n, then n to the power n, because um, what that does is it's just, we have n to the power n and then n to the power n. Well, no, excuse me. Um, so the n to the negative one actually just moves into the denominator. So now we would have n factorial times n to the power n and n times n. Then we replace the gamma of n with the factorial relationship, so that's just n minus one factorial. Now, um, what we can do is that we simplify things a little further, so we have negative the infinite sum n is equal to one. Uh, now, if we just do some simplifying, we have negative one to the three n, then divided by um, n square, okay? Now, this is where the interesting part comes in. So let's see if I... Um, I'm going to just get rid of this space right here. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of the thing we just solved for. So at least we have room to utilize. So let me, let me actually now move on to the um, another marker. So we'll put this in blue. So let me put this as a star over here. So that's what we want to evaluate. So now the star is that if we just expand this out, we have, um, so this will be negative then time, um, negative one times negative one plus uh, one divided by two square. And then we subtract this with one divided by three square. And then this alternates, right? Um, but you'll notice that if I just um, distribute the negative from outside into here, so now we would just have, um, now it's still alternating of course. So it's one and then subtract one divided by two square, add this with one divided by three square. Um, subtract one divided by four square, and then so on and so forth. What you'll notice is that um, this is actually a special function. This is actually this, um, the general formula is in a form of a Dirichlet eta function at S, but S in this um, situation over here is evaluated at um, two, S is equal to two. Let's see, and now I'll just put in this marker over here. But what we can do now is we can actually use a special formula for the eta function in terms of the Riemann zeta function. So in other words, it's actually kind of known as the alternating zeta function, if you want to put it in that perspective. We know that the eight, um, eta of s is actually just equal to one subtract two to the power one minus s, then multiply by the um, zeta of s. So here, this is two. So now the last thing we have to do is just put two back into here. So um, actually, let me just go back to the marker I just had. So now this will be um, one minus, so two to the one minus two, so that's negative one. So that's um, one half. And then multiply with uh, zeta of two. I don't really need that um, parentheses there, to be honest, zeta of two. But then we notice is that this is just one times Basil's problem. Um, zeta two is just pi squared divided by six. And so therefore the final answer is just indeed pi squared uh, divided by 12. And so there we have it. The final answer in the blue box, just like that with the repeated uh, tetration of um, infinite height. So um, yes. This is, I'm sure there's probably other methods the way to solve this, but this is generally, you know, I feel that this is like the straightforward method in this sense. So yeah, if you ever come across something like this, I think it's probably likely you want to try the Lambert W function. You know, you just let me know if that's possible or not. So yeah, that's a uh, pretty cool if you ask me.